Hello, I'm Chef Diane DeMeo and welcome to my kitchen. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, this is a great time for you to do it. Today we are making a maple brined pork loin. What does that mean? Well, we're actually going to brine the pork in a little bit of a maple composition for about 24 hours. Then we're going to get in the oven, roast it off, and we're going to have the juiciest, tastiest, maplest, that is a word by the way because I just made it up, maplest pork loin ever. What do we do to make that? We use any type of pork loin. It could be a large one, a small one. It could be pieces of pork that are about an inch thick. It could be pork chops. It could be pork anything. We will get it into this pan, but my first thing that I always do is get my brine in here first. Why? Because you can taste it and make sure that the composition is correct. You really wouldn't want to be tasting a brine that has raw meat in it. Not so tasty, right? First, I'm going to add some salt, approximately one quarter cup. I like to use salt that doesn't have any iodine in it, and I personally use kosher salt. This is what we use in the restaurants all the time. Maple syrup. The great thing about this brine is, as you can see, I'm using a no-name brand. It's not even a grade. It's probably artificial flavor, but that's okay. You don't have to spend $30 on a grade A maple syrup that's pure from Vermont. You're going to get the same taste regardless. Here I'm going to put in about uh, two cups of maple syrup because I really want that powerful flavor of taste of it. We're going to use some garlic. This is a trick that I always like to do. Um, it makes my life easier. I just smash the garlic cloves, that way it opens it up, releases some of the oil, and releases some of the flavor into it. We're going to go with about six. And that's that. Sugar. Brines always have a little bit of sugar in it. It helps the flavor. It also kind of tenderizes the meat too. And that was about three quarters of a cup. Whole coriander, definitely a very subtle taste, but I like to add these to my brines. It's just what I like to do. Another quarter cup of that. I like using whole black peppercorns. It's easy to take out. If you use ground pepper, then it just sticks all over the meat and you over infuse the meat with pepper. So we go with ground peppercorns. I've got about a quarter cup in there. And now, my water. This is about a half a gallon, which is about two liters of water. Ah, 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 sorry. Okay. So inside it goes. My big spoon. It smells like pancakes. And taste. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a salty, sweet, mapley composition with a hint of garlic and some black peppercorn. Exactly what I was going for. So that's good. All right, pork in. Boop. We want to make sure that the pork is absolutely submerged in the actual brine, which it is, and it's good. Now that we have the pork in the brine, we're going to refrigerate it for 24 hours. That way we keep it at proper temperature, the meat doesn't spoil, and the brine actually infuses into the pork. There you go. And now this is the hardest part, waiting the 24 hours for the pork to be brined so we can get in the oven and roast it off. It's been 24 hours and it's time to take out my nice and juicy brined piece of pork. All right, now I always keep gloves around because being in the restaurant business, first of all, we have to, it's part of uh, health code, but also you get to the habit and that way you don't get any type of meat or anything on your hands and it kind of keeps them clean. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to take off as much of the brine as I can from this pork loin, scrape off any of the seeds. If you were doing a chicken or any other type of bird or poultry, you'd want to make sure it's out of the brine for about four hours. That way the skin dries and you're going to have a nice crispy skin on that. But for pork, it really doesn't matter. Once I have most of the brine off, I'm just going to plop it in my nice non-stick pan. I like non-stick pans, easier to clean. And this is just going to go into the oven for about I'd say a good two hours. It's been about two hours. My pork should be done now. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of the oven so we can taste it. Here we go. Now, I know this pork is done. It has a nice glaze on it. It's resilient to my touch. Some of you might have a meat thermometer at home, which is fine. You can stick it in. You know what the eternal temperature is and you know it'll be done. I've been doing this for years, so I know it's good. Let's get it out of that pan. Ooh, baby. The one thing to keep in mind when you brine meats like pork, when you cut it, the inside has a little pink tinge to it. Ooh, 
with just squirted juices. So you want to make sure that uh, you don't think it's undercooked because it's not. Oh my god, this bad boy is just... Hmm. Look at that. Look at how much juice is coming out of here. <laughs> my mouth is watering. All right. Let's get it on the plate. Again, I always say aesthetics, aesthetics, aesthetics. The eye eats before the mouth, so if it looks fabulous, it's going to taste fabulous. I always keep fresh herbs on hand because decorating the plate is phenomenal, so you just have a little wamba. Now, since it's been brined in maple syrup, we're going to add a little bit of maple syrup to that plate because maple syrup always makes the world go round and it tastes super fabulous, especially when you're eating pork, bacon, or otherwise, right? Get a nice little schmizzle drizzle. Roasted pork loin that's been brined in maple syrup for about 24 hours, cooked in the oven for about two hours, topped off a little bit of maple syrup and a nice little garnish of rosemary. This is my favorite part where I get to taste what I've made. And of course, when it comes to pork, a second favorite part for me is the fat. <laughs> I like the fat. The fat is the best part. So I have to eat some now. Okay, shh. Okay, did you hear the crunch? I heard the crunch. Fat is good. Anyways, moving on to this maple syrup part. Wow, that's amazing. Okay. Remember, this has been brined for 24 hours in a maple syrup, salt, water, some garlic, some peppercorns, and coriander. That is the juiciest, most tender piece of meat I've had in a long time. Well, maybe not a long time because I always cook good, but right now, right here, amazing. Hints of maple syrup, I can taste the garlic. Peppercorns are nice and spicy in there with the maple syrup that I poured on the side. It's like eating a piece of ham, but not so salty and tender like mashed potatoes. You're gonna love this. Try this at home, recipes like this every single week and with me making them. See you soon. The key rule to brining is make sure that you have one cup of salt to a gallon of water.